So what is a weird culture? Well, WEIRD is an acronym that stands for Western, Educated, Industrialized, Rich, and Democratic. And uh, two of my collaborators, Steve Heine and Arnorn Zion, who are social psychologists, we coined this acronym as a consciousness-raising device to tell researchers and others about the psychological and cultural variation that's around the world that makes a big difference. And they've typically studied Americans and Canadians and to a larger extent, people from Europe and Australia. And these populations turn out to be psychologically peculiar along a number of dimensions. It's such a brilliant rhetorical device, but calling it weird, it's the thing that we normally would say as Westerners, like, oh, this is a you know, normal culture, but you kind of highlight how it's actually really different than a lot of places in the world. Yeah, and I've actually been surprised over the years about how much people tend to assume the world they live in is the kind of quintessential world or the world that people live in. You know, humans didn't have hospitals or police forces or judges or juries or technology or anything for most of human history. Uh, So it's really sort of a strange and unique world that we live in today. Now, how much of the world is weird by your definition? But if you just count the sort of countries where a lot of the population is highly individualistic, inclined towards analytic thinking, inclined to trust strangers, and has this cluster of traits, it comes out to be about 12% of the world's population. Oh, wow. So the vast majority of the world is not weird, you would say? Yeah. I mean, again, you don't want to take it too seriously. And what I do in my book, The Weirdest People in the World, is try to explain that variation. Uh, So there's nothing, it's just some, it's a place to start, a kind of uh, heuristic for thinking about the world. One of the very strange things about IQ tests in my view, is that the answers are often not objective in the sense that maybe you have a sequence of numbers and they say, what number comes next? Or you know, you've got these Raven's progressive matrices where there's a sequence of symbols. And you have to say what comes next. There isn't really truly an answer to that. And yet we grade it as though it has an answer and grading it as though it has an answer. Well, that score does correlate with many known things. It correlates with education, it correlates with income and so on. But I wonder if it would break down if you were to give it to people from other cultures. What do you think about that? Yeah, and that's one of the things we've been doing in my lab. Uh, so what, what we've done is we, we went to northern Namibia uh, and southern Angola. And there there's a natural experiment where you have the same ethno-linguistic groups who are mostly herd, herding populations. And some of the communities have formal schools and some don't. So we've been giving um, things like the Ravens progressive matrices and other kinds of cognitive tests to these communities. And we find that it's pretty much all about whether you live in a schooled world or not. Um, if, you, if you live in a schooled world, your IQ, your measure on the Raven starts going up as you get older, past about age five. But if you never do any formal education at all, it pretty much stays flat. And, you know, there's no reason to think these are very competent individuals who solve all kinds of interesting problems all day long. They just don't get the abstraction, essentially. Um, So like you said, it depends. It's a certain cultural frame you have to bring to these things. To hear the rest of this conversation, search in any podcasting app for Clearer Thinking with Spencer Greenberg, or check out the link in the description below.